it's a subtle change in the pH of the water. Uh, it goes from a pH of 8.1 and we think it could get as bad as 7.8 in this century. That's still actually alkaline. So it's not going to be corrosive to children's feet. So that's the first thing to get clear. But it's the process of making the water more acid. So it's moving towards the acidified end of it. And, and that's bad news actually because it sucks up carbonate in the water. That's the building blocks of shells. Um, it, it's what the White Cliffs of Dover are made from. And the water does become corrosive to that material. So okay, it's not, it's not going to be um, dangerous to walk your children in the sea, but it is dangerous for the shells of organisms and the, the skeletons of coral reefs. It actually eats away at those things. Well, what we're doing is, is a bit different to what most people are doing to look at the problem of ocean acidification. Because most people are, are putting a few species into fish tanks uh, to see what happens to those, or, or at best into large bags that are at sea. But if you want to look at the effects of the effects of acidification on whole ecosystems, then I think the best places to go are places that have got naturally high carbon dioxide levels, like around volcanic vent systems. There are places on Earth where carbon dioxide bubbles out of the seabed naturally, and they they form gradients in carbon dioxide, and you can you can pick somewhere along that gradient to say, well, what's it going to be like in 2020, or what will it be like in 2025 or 2050, and say, well, what what are we letting ourselves in for? It's actually pretty scary when you swim along these, these carbon dioxide vent gradients. I've, I've been to them in, in Mexico, in the Azores, in Iceland, Mediterranean and Papua New Guinea and at all of these places we see a dramatic drop in the biodiversity of what lives there. Well people might think that looking at a volcanic carbon dioxide vent is a real distortion of what we expect to see into the future because often volcanoes have other noxious chemicals that come out, things like arsenic or copper or, or sulphur. And Indeed, if you go to some of these volcanoes, they stink like rotten eggs. So what we're doing is, is deliberately picking areas that are not affected by these other nasty chemicals but are only affected by the increases in carbon dioxide. There are certain volcanic vent systems that have those unique characteristics like the ones we're looking at in, in Papua New Guinea and the ones near Vesuvius in the Mediterranean. And they're really key for telling us what's going to happen to coastal habitats going into the next few years. And it, they show us quite clearly that the diversity of species that live there and can survive falls away. The more carbon dioxide you put into the system, the less species that can survive. As a marine biologist, I'm very interested in this thing called biodiversity, which is the abundance and, and variety of species that live in the sea. And what we see is as carbon dioxide levels ramp up as we go towards bubbles that are coming out from these volcanoes, is that the biodiversity is hit and hit hard. There's a 30% drop in the biodiversity of this number of species as you get to levels of carbon dioxide we predict for the end of this century. And that's really quite bad news because we lose things like many of the species of corals that form reefs. I'm mainly looking at these uh, famous volcanoes that are in the Mediterranean. Uh, one is called Vesuvius, the other one's Mount Etna. And in the foothills of those um, big volcanoes, you can see the effects of carbon dioxide um, over the course of, of millennia, not just a, a, a year or something like that in a laboratory. And the Mediterranean, to, for anyone who's been on holiday knows, is got very blue water. And blue water actually means there's not much food in the water. And we think that's contributing to their vulnerability because they, these organisms, if they're well fed, they can actually protect themselves and grow quite well, even at high CO2 levels. But when carbon dioxide levels get high in these regions of the earth that have got blue water, they're particularly vulnerable because they don't have enough food in their systems to protect themselves from this corrosive water. If, I'm an optimist and, and it's nice to see that when you, you go into the, the water with high carbon dioxide levels there are many species of corals still living there. There are actually many species of fish. So fishermen might breathe a huge sigh of relief that there's actually something there to catch in the future and that of course is good news. But these industries that have to feed people have to look at these results and see which species are going to survive going through the coming decades because it's not going to be the ones that are there now, it's going to be a different set of species that, that can thrive in our coastal systems because we're changing them so dramatically. The good news is that some organisms can really cope with quite high carbon dioxide levels in the water and we know that by going to places that are naturally rich in CO2.
So there are animals like mussels that live in the North Sea that we think are going to be okay because if they are fed enough food, they can actually protect themselves from the corrosive water. And that's great for people working in this aquaculture industry that need to feed people going into the future. But if you go to other oceans, not the North Sea, but places like the Mediterranean, which has less food in the water, then these, these organisms become especially vulnerable because they don't have the energy to protect themselves. Well, if we carry on like we are, and it seems like we're tracking the worst predictions for carbon dioxide emissions uh, all around the world, if that carries on, then the results of our work show that coastal ecosystems will be badly degraded. And it's because of the combined effect of carbon dioxide. It doesn't only acidify the water and make it corrosive to the shells of, of corals and to, to scallops and things like that, but it also warms the water to levels that are stressful to those organisms. That combined cocktail is lethal for them and many of them die. And it's only a few weed-like species like jellyfish and invasive algal species that can thrive in those conditions. Basically, it's bad news all round. Some people think there'll be winners out of the system as well as these losers, and indeed that might be true, but the whole ecosystem um, taken in the whole is degraded very badly.